Hello and welcome to our online worship for this 16th Sunday after Trinity. My name's Jo Neary and I'm the team vicar in the Beminster team. It's really good to be with you. It's been a busy week in the team. We're back in our schools, back doing assemblies, collective worship in the school hall, singing with all the children together. It's been a real joy. There's been some fundraising going on. Mosterton had a very successful cream tea this weekend. Harvest festivals are kicking off uh, in Burstock this weekend. There was a wonderful Harvest Festival matins and uh, Harvest continues over the next few weeks. In Beminster this Saturday, there's the big green day, uh, which the eco team from the church are big, fully involved in. Going to be stalls and things to do about con concern and care for our climate and for the environment. So uh, perhaps you might be around in Beminster and see that but thank you to all those who've worked so hard. We've had a meeting this week of our lay leaders, those who lead in churches, small groups, our LPAs, our lay pastoral assistants, our lay worship leaders, um, and those who have responsibility for leadership in the local church. We met together for prayer and for a glass of wine to talk and to think about how we can resource each other for the time to come, for the year ahead. And we were talking about wanting to study more and wanting to enable people. If you're interested in being part of that, do get in touch. Uh, if you want support in study, we might be able to run some online courses as well as courses in person. So do get in contact with us and let us know what we can do to help you in your spiritual life. We had a baptism on Sunday. They're rolling in thick and fast at the moment. Gorgeous George, he was baptised at Solway Ash, looking very resplendent in his bow tie uh, and a joy to gather for families to celebrate the birth of children that's happened during lockdown. It's been a tough time for new parents. So we celebrate with them uh, that they can come now for baptism. And our toddler and baby group on a Monday is thriving. And again, proving a special place for people to come together and make relationships. It's so exciting that so much is going on and it's really good to be together and to be able to share God's love in word and action. Our service today continues with our liturgy for Creation Tide for this season in the church's year. And our hymn, as ever, is from St Martin in the Fields. So we prepare to worship God. God in Christ has revealed his glory. Come, let us worship. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the Lord's name is greatly to be praised. Give him praise, you servants of the Lord. O oh, praise the name of the Lord. We sing our hymn. <laughs>
praise you, living God. You give strength to the earth that sustains us. You open your hand to feed all living things. We praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. You teach us with stories of seeds and weeds and harvest time. You call us to accept your word and bear much fruit. We praise you, Holy Spirit, fire of love. You are the breath of life in every creature. You refresh our thirsty souls with grace. Blessed be God, source of wisdom, living word, abiding spirit. Blessed be God forever. We pray our collect prayer for this 16th Sunday after Trinity. Let us pray. O Lord, we beseech you mercifully to hear the prayers of your people who call upon you and grant that they may both perceive and know what things they ought to do and also may have grace and power faithfully to fulfil them. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. We come to our prayers of penitence. God our Father, we are sorry for the times when we have used your gifts carelessly and acted ungratefully. Hear our prayer and in your mercy forgive us and help us. We enjoy the fruits of the harvest but sometimes forget that you have given them to us. Father, in your mercy forgive us and help us. We belong to a people who are full and satisfied, but ignore the cry of the hungry. Father, in your mercy, forgive us and help us. We are thoughtless and do not care enough for the world you have made. Father, in your mercy, forgive us and help us. We store up goods for ourselves alone, as if there were no God and no heaven. Father, in your mercy, forgive us and help us. The Lord enrich you with his grace and nourish you with his blessing. The Lord defend you in trouble and keep you from all evil. The Lord accept your prayers and absolve you from your offences. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. We say together the Benedicity. Let us sing to the Lord, let us sing to the Lord. Let us sing to the Lord, let us sing to the Lord. All creation bless the Lord and you angels of the Lord, praise and glorify the Lord. Sun and moon bless the Lord and you night and day bless the Lord and you light and darkness bless the Lord. Praise the Lord all the earth, birds of the air bless the Lord, all creatures of the sea bless the Lord. Fire and hail bless the Lord, snow and frost bless the Lord. Mountains and hills, bless the Lord. Praised be Christ, for he is our hope. He is the joy of our hearts. Compassionate and gracious is our God. The Lord opens up a way and leads us on paths of life. The earth is full of God's love. The glory of the Lord fills the earth. Let all peoples bless God's name. Let, let everything that breathes bless the Lord. We listen to our reading from scripture. Today's reading is from James, starting at chapter three and going into chapter four. The first verse is from verse 13. The wisdom from above. Are there people among you who are wise and understanding? They are to prove it by their good lives, by their good deeds performed with humility and wisdom. But if in your heart you are jealous, bitter and selfish, don't sin against the truth by boasting of your wisdom. Such wisdom does not come down from heaven. It belongs to the world. It is unspiritual and demonic. Where there is jealousy and selfishness, there is also disorder and every kind of evil. But the wisdom from above is pure first of all. It is also peaceful, gentle and friendly. It is full of compassion and produces a harvest of good deeds. It is free from prejudice and hypocrisy 
and goodness is the harvest that is produced from the seeds the peacemakers plant in peace. Where do all the fights and quarrels among you come from? They come from your desires for pleasure, which are constantly fighting within you. You want things, but you cannot have them. So you are ready to kill. You strongly desire things, but you cannot get them. So you quarrel and fight. Do you, you do not have what you want because you do not ask God for it. And when you ask, you do not receive it because your motives are bad. You ask for things to use for your own pleasures. So then, submit to God. Resist the devil and he will run away from you. Come near to God and he will come near to you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We are led in a reflection on today's passage from the Bible. So, some wise words there from James again. Yeah, I mean, it's a question. It's it's, it's a question that's often been asked about uh, the, the you know our, our, our leadership team who is wise and understanding among you. I mean, I, I, I think our people have sussed this by now. So, uh, so well, it's you. It's you. You have well. I mean, yeah, but of wisdom. The question has been asked many times. And it, because it, it's then let down by show by your good life that your your works are done, uh, that, that that that's a bit uh, a, a bit um, you know a lot of potential there. Done with gentleness and born of wisdom. Mm. It's a challenge, isn't this? It is. It I, really I was is. I was discussing uh, with a colleague last night. Um, a number of us are submitting ourselves to be elected to bishops' council. And uh, what was really interesting was that we both said to each other, oh, well, if you want to stand, I'll stand down to avoid an election. <laughs> but then it turned out that there were not just two of us, there were more. So uh, we agreed that it would be fine. We'd go for an election and it wouldn't matter who won because we were quite pleased for each other. But uh, I am looking was... forward to the hostings for this election myself. <laughs> so there wasn't too much selfish ambition or envy going on last night, but... Uh, and no disorder or wickedness of any kind, I don't think. I would hope not. I would, I would hope not. Knowing, knowing the particular candidates, I think they uh, wouldn't have that kind of uh, part of their lives. But it is hard, isn't it? I mean, it, you know, we, we're we about to engage in uh, some talking around the Living in Love and Faith document, which is all about uh, identity, sexuality, relationships and marriage in the Church of England. <laughs> there we go. Excellent. Snap. Um, and that's going to be that's a tough that's a tough thing to talk about yes. without there being uh, conflicts and disputes. Conflicts and disputes, absolutely, really mm. tough. And to do it in a gentle, wise, peacemaking kind of way mm. is going to be a real challenge for all of us involved. So we need that wisdom. We need the gift of the Holy Spirit to be able to do that well. I think. Yeah. I think you're right. Absolutely. I think I think the whole of these conversations that we're having, there's, there's a lot of conversations going on at the, the moment. That is just one of them. That's a national church issue. And uh, and because we're a de democratic organisation, it's come down to the local, and we will discuss it, and then we'll send it back up through the various whatever as part of discussion going on. Um, and I think that's interesting because if you look at the more local discussions we're having, the local discussions that we're having, of course, are about generosity in many ways. Hmm. There is a great issue, dear viewer, you see, in the Church of England, and uh, it is not uh, it, it is not um, missing or absent uh, even in the Beminster team, uh, and certainly not in the Diocese of Salisbury. That issue being that um, we're bankrupt almost <laughs> well no we're not the members of the team certainly isn't bankrupt but the diocese is having a, a real problem because parishes are struggling particularly some of our smaller and tiny rural parishes and, and poorer parishes because despite the feeling that um, dorset uh, and wiltshire are extremely rich areas there are some very poor areas of both of those counties that struggle with issues and we know them here we have our own food bank you wouldn't think that of Birmingham, but we do. And we it's have busier issues. than ever at the moment. Yeah, we have issues over um, 
travelling to school and the costs of travelling to school. Um, we have issues of, uh, uh, of course, hidden poverty, particularly in the in the agricultural and rural um, community. And huge uh, huge problems about housing at the moment in our locality. We do. And on top of that, of course, we're being asked to consider how we help with the present worldwide situation of helping to house those that have been brought in because they have a right and quite rightly we you know we can't turn away from that ourselves we've got to look at it so there's all kinds of problems one of the problems is of course uh, finances and now we keep the present structure going and how we employ um people like joe and myself because we are the the costly element of the church it's like any other big business and that's you know part of my background in business studies did lots of study on how you keep costs down and uh, and and we all know that the biggest cost of any organization is its staff however mm. precious you may think they are and uh or not or, or not as the case may be from the beginning of that reading in james where yeah. did come from um uh, and so we're having to confront in a way which I think has got to be done gently without accusation. How do we try to, to look at this situation? So we're in the middle of it, we're not in the middle. We're on the second week this week of a four week um, teaching and preaching um, uh, road to, to, to speak under the auspices of a thing called generous uh, giving. And, and, uh, and that's it, thank you, Joe, generous giving. And this week we're gonna be talking in our service, which is why I think it's key we, we try and look at it as, as a wider thing about um god's generosity to us uh, and how do we how do we respond to god's generous generosity to us by being generous back in return and it's not just about money because there's many ways of being generous aren't there well and many and many organizations to whom we might want to be generous mm. um particularly if we have received uh generous love and care from them I think you know a lot of people when they've perhaps had a loved one who's been poorly or they've experienced a particular challenge in their life often the benefit they've been beneficiaries of people's generosity and then afterwards they want to reward that but um yeah God's been very God is very generous we're, we're entering that harvest season with our schools at the moment and just thinking about God's generosity his abundance how much he's given us the glory of creation, the glory of the food growing in the field, the glory of having time and space together to be freely educated. I mean, that perhaps doesn't resonate with your average seven-year-old, but for those of us who are mindful of what's going on in Afghanistan at the moment, to see uh, boys and girls gathered in school is a reminder of something we shouldn't take for granted, that, that we have that freedom and, and generosity also, to be educated. It's also about what impact does that generous generosity have on our lives as well, and how do you, how do we respond? I don't want to say in kind, but that's really what I perhaps mean. How do we respond likewise to God, yeah. and um, and how important is it that we uh, are able to uphold a structure which we would call the church, which you can call it what you like, that allows in society that kind of response to those those who need james's letter two weeks ago was saying you know and, and i preached on the fact that it's, you know it's a letter to a church like ours we love the rich we love the clean and the whatever we love those who are nice or whatever but we tend to ignore those who are poor uh, dirty hungry if we're not careful and that's what that's what james was saying very early on you can't do this god's love for us uh, shows that we should be giving that love back in, in response and if we just reflect on the work of the week of the week that we and our colleagues in uh, churches have been engaged in you know this week just this week in the Beminster team yeah. um we fed the hungry we have. we have prayed for the sick we have we have welcomed people who are lonely we have listened to people's stories we have supported people in practical ways we have encouraged people spiritually. We've enjoyed uh, hospitality at Walking Wednesday. We have shared the good news with 450 primary school children. Um, that's just over the last three or four days. It is. No. And, 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 what's happened in the life of the team? 
and 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 yeah, and and, and that and that's vital for us to see. And I think it's good. It'll be good. It's good for us. And what I should be encouraging people to do is, in fact, all of us who are preaching on Sunday, hopefully, will be encouraging people to do is to take time in their daily life just to reflect on some of that, and where they've seen generosity um, being given, or or when they they've witnessed um, generosity for themselves, and uh, and now you can share that kind of message. Is it of God? I believe it's of God. Some people say you don't have to be a Christian to be good. You can do that, and I would agree. I would agree absolutely. But I think I think if you are a Christian, it is a gospel imperative that you you know you're, you're showing this this generosity back, and and also it's a Christian imperative. We, you know, people people are always a bit hesitant. Clergy are always a bit hesitant about talking about giving extra money. Because it's almost like saying, you know, you you, you need to pay us because we've got to continue, and, and it can be a bit awkward. I don't have that unease because it's not just about keeping us fed; it's about allowing um, an organisation that is prepared to stand up for these values to continue to do so. Absolutely. And if you want, and if you want that opportunity to be part of an organisation or a, or a faith that is prepared to stand up and confront the issues. Of uh, 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 that we've been speaking about, it does have to be paid for. It's no different to any organisation, any other organisation. If you're, if you know, I, I see this two a, 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 a small chain of shops have closed. They have to be only been open for two weeks because of lack of funding, and you know they're blaming all kinds of things. Probably bad organisation, but I don't know. Um, but if you you know you, you can only have what you're prepared to support and give and and i think we've got to be as a church we've got to be able to say you know we need uh we need generosity in finance as well as in gifts and time and talents and skills being given to all the things because actually all the things you mentioned didn't really cost in that direct you know don't have to pay for our advice or our listening or our praying or you know the the fellowship and the generosity we've given but there is an overall cost, so it, you know, which has to be met in some ways. Well, and those those things couldn't happen unless there were people available to facilitate them. And if I was still earning my living as a teacher, um, I couldn't have been in full primary schools this week, and I couldn't have been uh, yes. hosting Walking Wednesday, and I couldn't have been uh, praying with people. Uh, in the middle of the day I could have squeezed in some of that around uh, our jobs and we did and that was you know that's what and that's what a lot of people have to do and we and we also have you know that calling to be disciples 24 7 whether we're engaged in full-time ministry or full-time work somewhere else so it's it's not that it can't happen but if you want that resource available all the time then it does come at a cost and also, Gosh. I should I should point out it's it's tricky. It's always hard talking about money and all that kind of stuff. But all the clergy, well, the clergy I know well enough to talk about these things with, they give to the church. So that's that's our discipleship. That's our commitment as Christians. Even though we receive benefits from others' generosity, we also give our money to the church as well because we believe that that's important. Mm. So. It's not something that we're preaching about in a vacuum. <laughs> it's right. about how we choose to live as well. And so I think part part of the uh, the thing perhaps we can all do this week um, as part of this theme of generosity is perhaps keep a note of any stories of generosity that we see, and uh, that's well worth doing and 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 uh, and thinking about it and uh, look out for situations perhaps where generosity is needed. Um, and you'll bump into those, I'm sure, not only on the news or in the papers, but in your daily life. Um, you know, it could be the person who we see sat in the street. You know, some would say begging, but if you're homeless, they've got no much option really, but to sit and hope somebody will give you something. Um, you could keep a journal or a scrapbook. Well worth doing. I might, I might, I might go back to my journal and just make some 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 notes uh, about about that. But more importantly, at the end of all this, and the end of each day, and the end of each, and at the end of the week, pray about it. Hand it back to God, because uh, His response may surprise us beyond measure. And as James reminds us in that reading we heard, draw near to God, 
and he will draw near to you. To you. Absolutely. Thank you, dear viewer of uh, RevChat. Thank you, dear viewer of the service on uh, uh, the, the, uh, the recorded service we send out each week. Be good to know uh, how many of you are watching it and, you know, what your thoughts are. And uh, there we are. Okay. Have we achieved both? I hope, I hope our Director of Communications thinks we have. Excellent. We affirm our faith. Let us declare our faith in God. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. We come to our prayers of intercession. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you have called us together to be the body of Christ in our contemporary world, just as Jesus called those disciples to be with him as he journeyed towards the cross and all that meant. Help us to live out our calling, celebrating our differences and diversity, not like them getting hung up on being anxious about who's most important, who's most significant, who matters most, and other such human concerns. May we, your people, your church, know that each and all are known and loved by you who made us the people we are, and may we work with each other to build up our community of faith and affirmation. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. As summer slides into autumn, and still the threat of Covid hangs over us and our world, we pray for wisdom and generosity for those who make decisions, that we may be concerned for the, the good of all people, and enable other nations also to find help and hope based on the terrible experiences of this country. In this time of uncertainty, when no one knows what the future holds, we pray for national leaders to have clarity, vision, compassion and truthfulness. And we pray for all the nations to work together across divisions, both past and present. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. We pray too for those who face hunger, financial hardship in our nation and our society, where the divisions of wealth seem so great and to be increasing. We pray for single parent families facing particular struggles and challenges, for those on their own who have nowhere to live that is safe or secure. We pray for those worried about gr growing older or concerned about health and health issues at a time when the NHS faces such stress. And as we do so, we give thanks for those people who work in the NHS and as other carers and caring communities we pray for ways to be found to make good the shortages of staff and people and money. We give thanks for them, for the tired and weary medical staff and carers who've done so much, seen so much, over the last couple of years. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We lift to your loving arms, Lord God, those we know personally for whom health is a concern at this time, those affected by Covid directly or in their own families, for the many millions of people in this country whose treatment has been delayed, whose pain has not been able to be treated, for symptoms that have not been caught in time, May those who experience sickness or pain 
whether body or emotions, know your love, our concern and compassion and support. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, as we walk with you day by day through our lives and in this changing, challenging world, we remember with deep gratitude those who have gone before us in the family of faith, the Church, <laughs> from those first arguing disciples around Jesus in Capernaum right down to our present time who shared their faith with us. We give thanks for all those who in our day, in their own way, in their own lives, worked out ways of living in relationship with others and with you, and who handed down to us your knowledge of love and grace and truth. May they know the fulfilment of their faith in your eternal presence as we seek to follow them in the way. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. So, Spirit of life and light, Jesus, our teacher and friend who called us to walk with you, Heavenly Father, maker and sustainer, we entrust ourselves and those for whom we have prayed, our joys and sorrows, our concerns, our hopes and our fears, into your care and keeping this day. Strengthen us to go on our way with you and one another with all our differences into whatever the future may hold, knowing that as we do, you hold us. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. We join our prayers and thoughts together in the words that Jesus taught us praying. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Creator God, you give seed for us to sow and bread for us to eat. Make us thankful for what we have received and generous in supplying the needs of others. So all the world may give you thanks and glory through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Go in strong and growing faith. Trust in the tenderness of Christ to heal a bruised and broken world. Thanks be to God. Go in eager and refreshing hope. Work with Christ risen from the dead to fulfil the promises of new creation. Thanks be to God. Let us go in peace to treasure and to tend the world God made and loves. In the name of Christ. Amen. Thank you for joining us today. Take care, stay safe and we'll see you again very soon. Bye bye.